Yes, thank you so much, everyone. That was really, really lovely. And um, pretty much everything that people were talking about, I was sitting here going, yep, yep, that's, no, that's really important. I agree with that. Um, so we have had a few questions. I'm scrolling back um, a little bit of a way to have a look at some I of those. I for Lawrence for setting off. It's, if, I'm assuming I've set Lawrence's off, so I'm not going to say the word again. <laughs> I, um, you, at I, least you didn't say, okay, Google, did you? Oh, crap. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I did look around at mine, but uh, mine's, mine's unplugged because my husband's <laughs> slightly paranoid. Um, so where... I've lost all the questions now. This is... Um, where we're going. Oh, yes. Yeah, so we, we had some of these. Uh, James, you kind of answered a question about how you sort of started advertising and things, but that is kind of um, relevant to Anne Marie as well. Sort of when you've got things happening online, whether they're paid for or not, and, and Fran, you might have ideas on this, how do you go about marketing them, advertising them, that sort of thing? Yeah, well, I'll, I mean, I'll jump in. I've I'm got no um, solutions. I'm not, I've got no magic uh, bullet for this. Uh, I just, I'm, I mean, I, like I said, I'm fortunate because I've been doing online stuff for ages, uh, which has been online stuff for free and just going out there. And I've never asked anyone for anything. And then I kind of thought, well, maybe I can cash in some goodwill now and uh, ask people if they would like to do this course uh, so i'm afraid i've got no solution for this well can i ask a question then uh, Jane? Do, do you have a email list you can use because email lists are very very powerful because people respond to them they, they open them they might scroll past a um you know something on twitter uh, well the answer is no i don't have an email list no so I was going to say that's I've been doing lots of reading up on this because this is one of the things that we looked into as the Met. Um, and my question to James was going to be about being kiffic. Um, but in terms of promotion, um, we find social is super important. But um, as the Kevin said, email lists are super important as well, especially for people that have been to things before. So there's a lot about kind of repetition and building that community and that group um, on a platform that you're more in control of because the other thing that you can do is build up a massive Instagram following and then Instagram you know say that you violated a rule and then before you know it your whole account's lost and you've lost those kind of thousands of followers and um, so email marketing is definitely something that we use um, quite a lot as an organization and we try it as much as we can to divert people towards our newsletter and kind of say here's what you missed this week why don't you sign up for the newsletter and you'll be the first to know when we open this or you'll be the first one to to uh, have access to x y and z and um, so emails is definitely one and then the other one for building your email list i've seen lots of people recommend which we're considering or we've, we've kind of started doing in the small is kind of ebooks and kind of free giveaways so it's a very american way of doing things which is why we've had to find a more british sanitized gentle way of doing it um but a lot of people on instagram or on twitter will say you know uh, you know here's a hundred different resources about cryptography you know down get this downloadable to be able to access the list that i've compiled and then people then join your list and you kind of know they're interested in cryptography because they've downloaded the free list of cryptography resources and so it's easier to sell to them um as a captive audience and um, the one thing i will say about a newsletter though is having to give people content semi-regularly is sometimes just as much work so um Obviously, it's the Mets. We run lots of lots of events, so there's always something to say if we're going to send a newsletter um, on a monthly basis. But if um, we're sending it anything less than that, then sometimes we do struggle to try and pull together content that's new rather than repeating. By the way, last week that was open; it's still open now. Um, but yeah, social has definitely been brilliant for us. But yeah, the conversions are quite low, so that's the only thing with the newsletter list. You have to be patient. I think it's um, I think it's very hard as well I would say for let's say self-employed lone freelancers um so um I recently my accountant has been absolutely brilliant during the lockdown and he ran a marketing um uh seminar and there, there was a phrase and I was just looking it up that really stuck with me and um marketing apparently is all about helping people with what you know and communicating it visibly so that when they need what you sell 
you're the one they trust. And I thought that was a really unusual way to look at marketing because a lot of us, I can imagine, you know, we're not, we're not those people that shout from the screen, from the rooftops, you know, hey, look at what I can do. Um, but we, you know, we helping people, yeah, we can do that. Um, and so I would say if you're trying to sell something as a lone wolf, um, associate yourself with other people and have a look at Facebook groups that already have that following. You know, there's, there's the market out there, try and find them rather than they find you. That would probably be, be my best advice. Um, but I've never been a great marketer, hence why um, my business is done through other companies and things. Um, and to be honest, they've always found me somehow. Um, so maybe I have a great marketer, I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, I hope that helps a little bit. In terms of generosity as well, there's um, being generous, sorry, with how you contribute and build your following. There's also a great book called, or like set of principles called Working Out Loud. That is kind of the, it's like a Dale Carnegie meets the internet, but it's a little bit more about like you're saying, kind of how do you, how do you meet other people that have similar interests and mm. connect with them in a generous way? So then if you do want to sell something, you've already got that kind of connection and they're more willing to, if not buy it themselves, pass it on to other people who might also buy it. So yeah, I'll pop that in there. Oh, you've got it, brilliant. Great, thank you everyone. Um, one th tiny thing I will add to that is if you are collecting people's email addresses to tell them about stuff, um, make sure you aren't saying, I'll use this for this purpose and then use it for something totally different because GDPR. Um, we are very rapidly approaching the end. Uh, we have one more question about recommendations for video editing methods and software. I'm not sure two minutes is enough time to go through that. Um, just, uh, just some names would be good yeah, actually of what people are using is not bad is it and um, if we make sure we add those to the document and everything as well and we can carry on that question after after four o'clock if you're able to hang around as well anyone that's that's got any input on that shall I jump in with um, video software yeah go for it yeah. Yeah, I mean, um, only that. I know people recommend um, Adobe Premiere or Premiere Elements, which I think is the standalone cheaper version. However, um, I don't use that. That's not my preferred one. I use something called uh, Vegas Movie Studio, which is not one of the famous ones, uh, but it's the one that I get along with. My, my biggest advice would be think about why. Um, because editing can eat into a hell of a lot of time. Um, so my biggest advice normally with editing is don't bother um, because you can become obsessed with perfection. And if you're producing something for, um, let's say, Twitter or Facebook, you don't normally need that much editing. Um, and if you want to just sort of splice it up, so say if you sort of make a mistake and you want to just sort of shove something in, then there's loads of like, just do it simply. So um, I'm a Mac girl, so I think it's Movie Maker. Movie Maker is, is fine. Um, but normally when you get editing as well, you then need a, a computer that's got bigger processing power. And so it just all starts getting a bit more complicated. You've got to get the footage from your phone onto your, pat onto your laptop. So, and there's some, a Movie Maker you can get just on your phone and just do it there and then. Um, you, you, I'd say minimal fuss is actually quite endearing in this time. So say if you've got a picture that you want to show, just hold it up. Like, don't think about sort of, oh, how am I going to actually get that picture into there and things like that. Like, um, keep it simple because it will drive you mad if you've not done it before. If you've got time to spare and you can learn all the little tricks to it, brilliant, go for it. Um, but if you haven't and you just need to get something out, just keep it simple. Brilliant. Um, Katie, I know you've got some answers to this. Uh, but uh, also... Well, I, I sent that message a while ago. Uh, <laughs> it's so good. I was, it was about the, the idea of uh, how to get your message out to people. I think the, the classic um, kind of psychom thing that people say about communication is think about your audience. Um, and I know there'll be, because everything has now become an online thing, there'll be people who aren't used to working with an online audience. You're used to, you know, putting up posters around the university or whatever you do to attract people to events. Um, so it may be that it's a bit of a steep learning curve for people who are trying to work out how to promote things online. Um, but a lot of that advice has been really good. But I guess if you think about like the kind of people that you are targeting with your 
thing and keep that as broad as possible obviously um but sort of you know where would they look for things like this like if i wanted to go and do an online course about cryptography where would i be looking for that and try and think about how to get that message to those places brilliant thank you very much um so we will continue this discussion if any of you are able to hang around after uh, four o'clock, which is basically now. One thing I will add to the video editing discussion is um, whilst you might not want to do too much editing and things, things like subtitles are important. So accessibility is never an afterthought. It should be an intrinsic part of what you do, which I think we've said a few times on these. Um, so do think about about things like that and a lot of things you're using to upload your content to will have options for ultra generated subtitles um, make sure you read them that they're, they're not perfect in any way but it does take a very long time to edit them so i'm gonna hand over to kevin now who will just say uh, another thank you to our speakers and about next week indeed yes i'll try and make this very very brief so um well thanks first of all for, for everybody for coming um but let's uh, thank our three speakers again so there's a little uh, reactions thing we can we can hit to say thanks to thanks to our great speakers today um, and then the, the remaining thing is we've, we've got one more planned talking maths in lockdown there may be others but next week's one is maths communication in universities so um, people who deliver maths outreach activities as part of a university or large organization may find their work has been disrupted <laughs> indeed so we'll discuss what people can do and how to still access training and so on we've got uh, Luciana Ryler um, from UCL Ruth Holland from Leeds uh, Marelli Grady from Oxford Deanne Johnson from uh, Manchester University of Manchester so um, we look forward to seeing you next week Anne Marie, I was gonna. I had a question in my head. So, STEMETS is you've said for um, people under twenty-five. Is there anything similar that you've seen that is a sort of good online community for those of us who have looked twenty-five in the mirror quite a long time ago? Um, so, there's there's lots of options. I think over twenty-five, it gets easier because you're adult, so you can talk about. <laughs> can't talk about with the kids basically <laughs> um that's why i always say like you can have alcohol we, we can't have that at our events and that's basically all we're missing um so there's, there's lots i think it, it does depend on um what you're interested in so i think any community is one that has a really well-defined topic so there's not one particular one that i'd say you must be a part of that however um there is one, all the ones that come to mind actually are women only, but there's, um, women and non-binary only, there's a Ada's list is a really good one. Um, that's almost like a, a mailing list. And there's also something called Sisters, which is run by the Anita Borg Institute and the UK version, I think it's called Daphnet. So there's quite a good, quite a good set of kind of mailing lists that people are able to kind of connect with each other. But in terms of stimets for adults, yeah, there's, you've got women who code. Um, there's quite a, there's a lot. I think it, it does genuinely depend on your area of STEM that you're interested in. Um, yeah. Sorry, it's like a non-answer. But... No, that's really helpful. Thank you. Um, and I think we were also in the middle of a really useful conversation about uh editing and then things like that and I, I mean for me part of that is also things that you have programmed things that you've made look pretty and putting those into videos and and all sorts of things so has anyone got any more questions around that sort of thing i was just going to add something to what fran said which is that yeah editing will drive you will drive you potty so i we um we've been doing live events on zoom every week for the last 11 weeks and we're going to do 12 weeks with a surprise 13th week and um because we've got children on it we can't release that video footage as is so we've had to edit every single session for the last 11 weeks to cut all the images of the children out um, and also add in some youtube and, and add all kinds of things and and i definitely because it was the first time we we're doing it i ended up doing the editing for the first couple and I definitely threw it out and started again a couple of times, but that's an hour long video. So it's a lot of hours of my life that I'm never going to get back. So I would say 
kind of if you know you're going to release a recording think about that from the beginning so you can just do it once um, but the other thing I will say is um, Mac United uh, iMovie is pretty good <laughs> QuickTime comes standard in your laptop and then I also um, Keynote is like an understated addition in this space so Keynote and Canva are really good for making animations that you can then cut and intersperse into your videos to make them look really well put together. So Keynote has those kinds of transitions that look pretty good and you can export as a movie and um, with like automated times in between slides. And then there is a really good tool called Canva. Canva is free um, and it's like canvas, but without the S, canva.com. And they've got templates and pretty much anything you make in Canva, you can export as a video. Um, and uh, they've got professional designers that work on that. Um, so that's also really good. And they've got a free version if you're a nonprofit or social enterprise, right? And I'm pretty sure if you're in education. It is worth pointing out that editing is pain, but if you need to edit, like don't be afraid of trying it. Like, so there are free packages. <laughs> so, it, yeah. yeah, like the, um, so to, to pick, to rebalance for PC users, I, I hear there are some of them out there, but Windows Photos is the app now that comes with Windows for Photos, also has a video editor. It sounds like they discontinued the old movie maker in Windows, although I think you can still find it pretty decent. Sounds like it's free and old, but Photos has a video editor. And there are lots you can get on trial uh, packages. So I, I was using one called Reaper, which is an audio editing package uh, that's free during lockdown at the moment. They give you a free license key till July, I think. And it can also handle videos quite well. So I had to learn a lot about audio editing, but the fact that I could handle videos with it was, was pretty useful, even if it was a steep learning curve. Editing is a pain, but if you have to do it, there are ways that keep it slightly less painful than it could be. Yeah, I would definitely say that if you, so I, I suppose keep it simple was if you've got to just chop, don't think about sort of, oh, I want this thing to whiz in here. And then I want to play around with this type thing. You know, that, that, that's lovely if you've got the time, but yeah, it, you'll be jumping out the window. I think the only one I've used was to add subtitles on short videos and it was called Headliner, which is one that you can sign up for free and you get 10 videos per month. So um, if you were happen to be someone with multiple email addresses, um, that is possibly a thing that can, can work for you. Um, she says on the thing that's going to go public on the internet. Um, yeah, to be clear, we do not encourage fraud. Do not encourage that. Do not encourage that. Um, but if you were testing things out and, and sort of needed to to do some experimenting and then needed to do some actual things. It could be that you're testing things out on a personal account and then you're doing actual things on, on a work account or something like that, um, which I used for uh, adding subtitles to short videos and things and they'll do 10 minutes, they'll auto-generate, but I did have to go through and edit and things like that. It's amazing what the internet thinks the word maths is. Um, which we found with, with the YouTube subtitles for the recordings of these as well. So. Could I just add two more things on editing, if that's okay? I'll be very, very quick, so there's more questions coming in. Um, if you do want to learn how to edit, you know, because this whole thing is about learning new skills, then, um, like, um, someone was saying, I can't remember who, sorry, that you can get free trials. So the two, I'm just looking at my other computer here, um, the two that I learned how to edit many moons ago was Final Cut Pro and Avid. Um, they're both quite different, um, but you can have a play with that on a trial. I think they're sort of 14 day trials and you can see if you like it or not. Um, also, and I'm really sorry, but for Mac users, something that you will end up loving is AirDrop. And so with AirDrop, you can drop your uh, really high um, video that you've taken straight onto your Mac and then you can edit it from there. I'm sure with PCs, you can just plug it in um, because people really struggle to get the, the image from their phone onto their computer to be able to do stuff with it. AirDrop will change your life if you've never heard of it before. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Macwise, there's also something called Clips, which we've been playing with, but we've decided not to use. Um, so this is on the new, one of the new OSs, but there's something that comes with your iPhone called Clips that will do subtitles in real time as you record a video and have them showing at the bottom. Um, but it films in one one ratio. So think about which platform you're going to put it on because that one by one looks a bit awkward on some platforms. 
Yeah, I think PowerPoint can also do automatic subtitling. This is a rumor that I've heard, but I've not played with it. Um, but if you, you know, kind of run PowerPoint as though you're doing a presentation, it can subtitle what you're saying uh, in real time, which is terrifying. Um, one other thing I was going to throw in, uh, speaking as a freelancer, um, I'm aware that if you're looking for some editing being done, there may be humans who are capable of doing this. And in these uncertain times when freelancers are all short on work, uh, it might be something worth considering, especially if you're backed by an organisation with a budget or a university or something. Um, you know, if you can find someone to do that editing for you, they'll be able to do a, a good job of it if you're not confident that that's something you can do yourself. Or find someone to deliver an online course uh, in, I don't know, video editing. Yeah. <laughs> Follow James's <laughs> model. I'm going to volunteer Katie for that over the summer. Join Katie. For, no, sorry. Well, I, I mean, I could. That's a terrifying thing. Um, yeah, I, I was going to throw in a quick question, if that's OK, about because um, it's sort of something that people have vaguely touched on in a couple of the things that people have said. Because um, one thing I'm keen to emphasize in this is that we are talking about learning new skills. But for some people, they're kind of feeling forced into this. Um, and it's probably worth pointing out to everyone that if you have existing skills, it's also very important to you know, acknowledge that and make use of your existing skills. Don't feel like you have to completely change your entire outlook and retrain and do everything totally differently just because of lockdown. Um, and I suspect that in a lot of the stuff that James has done, like he already makes videos for YouTube. So he's already got a camera and he's already roughly familiar with how to make videos. Um, and he, it's a workshop that he does already that he knows inside out. So these things mean that it was a lot easier for him to make that transition uh, to an online version. So kind of taking a moment to think about, you know, what you're good at, what your um, existing skills and equipment are um, when you're thinking about what you might want to do. Because, you know, the, there's this big thing, like, online does not equal YouTube. I think it's a thing that, that people sometimes think like, oh no, everything's online now, I have to do videos about stuff. Um, it doesn't have to be on YouTube. Videos can be useful for loads of other things as well. They can go alongside worksheets and activities and, you know, things that people can access in different ways. Not everyone likes accessing things through videos and those people are currently having a bit of a nightmare because that's all that's available uh, for things at the minute. But, you know, it may be that if you're really good at writing, you could write a really good, you know, a, you know blog post or something written that people could access instead so um you know i guess a question to the speakers like how have you found ways to incorporate your existing skills into the stuff that you've been doing differently under lockdown i think for me it's been i don't know ultimately doing the same thing but having to do it in different ways so it's the the base is still the same skills it's just being able to present them differently. Um, I think it's interesting what you say though about the video and um, kind of people accepting things in different ways. So we started, we were already gonna do them, but we've started um, creating courses for some of our STEM ads. And we've been really conscious the whole time to have the video, have the caption, but also have it as text underneath so you can kind of read through and then also have I'm it's super visual as you can tell from my presentation. So also having images alongside everything that we're doing. So I'm not sure I think it's just it's applying the skills in different ways rather than even necessarily seeing them as transferable skills and even with coding that's what we always end up saying it's um you're not learning to code for coding's sake you're learning to code because it's a different way to express what you already know and what you're already interested in and the perspectives that you already have um so you're not learning that skill and throwing away the existing ones you're, you're learning it to augment who you are and also to evolve it i guess rather than just kind of keeping it in old money in that way. Um, I think I've been quite lucky in the fact that I started in TV behind the camera. And so it's not the fact that I've never understood what goes on behind the camera, but also most of my money actually comes in from doing live stage events. And most people that do live stage events might not do TV stuff. So I've been quite lucky in the fact that I do TV stuff and I've been able to use those skills to be able to just transfer it to my stage stuff so I can then film my stage stuff. Um, so I think I've been quite lucky in that aspect in terms of I'm like, oh, this is what my skills are for. <laughs> like, um, but it, it hasn't made it easy, I suppose, like just, um, you know, and I think about, oh, I'm lucky because I've got all these skills, but still sort of figuring out what computer works with what. And that's sort of what's made me like really keen to come and do stuff like this in terms of you know, I, I understand the whole principle of filming and the whole lighting and all of that. Like, I get that. And I still struggle. 
And so I think about people that are filming for the very first time going, what the heck, you know, what's a cutaway? What's this? What's that? And I just think, oh my word, like if I can give some of my help knowledge somewhere, then it might sort of make it a little bit easier. Um, one of the things I have to add to this is when lockdown first happened we weren't yet furloughed and, and we were all sort of trying to do things online for the first time and, and I've always done all of my engagement face to face that's that's what I do that's how I've always done it um, and I've never had time to invest in learning those new skills like making videos like doing things like that and it was so lovely the community of people at the RI suddenly had a little bit more time from other things that they would normally be doing like putting on live events to support those of us who were new to some of the skills that they had like making videos things like that so they were able to share their knowledge with the rest of us that were doing stuff for the first time and that's something i found has had not within the ri because we we're all furloughed and and therefore not doing any work work but um something that's continued throughout this is i've got people that I can I can ask for help on stuff so Katie and Ben for example have helped me with um, video software to to do online pub quizzes and things like that and and they've been people I can ask to, to help me out to learn new things and then I've gone away and played with it but there's been someone there I can go I can't make you do this what do I do um, and it's coming back to that thing that Marie said about having a community of people and actually the SciComm community are incredibly friendly and welcoming. And for the most part, everyone's really lovely and really helpful. So as long as you don't take the mickey, there are lots of people out there that are willing to help, that are willing to support you if you're doing something for the first time. Um, yeah, on that note, I found the, uh, out, sorry, Katie. We have the team at WhatsApp group as well. So uh, for, for people like people who've been to our in-person events will have had an email with the link to this, but there is a little WhatsApp group that we've set up for maths communicators um and i'm sure that someone is frantically trying to find the link for that to paste it into the chat at the moment um if not i'll do it when i finish talking but yeah it's it's a good kind of collection of people in there and if you go on there and just say oh i'm really stuck on this thing i don't know what i'm doing there will almost certainly be someone on there who's got some experience of it or who can point you at someone who has um because i think that's partly what it's all about you know there's this discussion about um whether lockdown has made everyone more friendly and helpful and supportive to each other i kind of think it has because we're all struggling and we're all kind of a bit lonely and you know looking for ways to make meaning out of life and i think helping other people is a good way to do that so uh sorry it just became philosophical all of a sudden yeah um, that was great we've got a deep and meaningful out of katie i feel like that's an important thing to say i don't know what i'm saying is i have a limited amount of free time but i'm very keen to help people so not don't everyone ask me for help but you know i'm i'm happy to help people and i think on that note it was really heartening to hear from all the speakers and the rest of people contributing that when you have to do something new it is not an easy process so hearing james go through the list of the websites that he tried out and the products he tried out and had to tweak to get it this is this is normal like learning to do something and then going through lots of steps of process and finding it frustrating and ending up with a product which kind of works but isn't perfect it's completely normal and it's heartening to hear that because when you see people like james do a very professional job on youtube and he's done it for years sometimes we forget that even James is a normal human being and even Fran uh, has to figure out how to like prop up a, a, the camera in the right corner and I don't know, I've, I've learned a lot about learning during lockdown that it's fr still frustrating but you can still get somewhere and there's people to ask which is what Katie and Sam were saying I think Sam's got a hand up is that, is, I don't know oh no she's just holding a hand <laughs> no I'm just leaning weirdly um one thing I will add as well, like I a couple of weeks ago involved in a chat on Twitter about and I mentioned, you know, I find it really useful to have a list of, of places that you can go to to find advice on doing things for the first time and things like that. And a couple of people um, were sort of saying, oh, you know, you shouldn't be doing something if if you, you don't know how to do it. You, should, you shouldn't be trying to do things for completely the first time. Um, leave that to people that know what they're doing and things like that. And I think there's always a place for learning new things. Yes, stick to your strengths, but actually, as we've been discussing, your strengths are transferable and there is nothing wrong with you learning to do new things and doing it for the first time. And there are an awful lot of people who will support you in doing that. And maybe a few people that will moan that there's lots of people 
doing videos for the first time, for example, and, and the quality is variable and, and things like that. But there's loads and loads of support available um, and just, just ignore people that, that aren't supportive. Well, but there's also nothing to say that you should do something new for the first time. If, you're, if you just want to stick in your comfort zone, if you just want to do things you're familiar with, that's absolutely fine as well. Sorry, Emery, you're about no, to say I was going to say, I, I always heard the example of water, or people always say, kind of, go to the supermarket and have a look at the water aisle. And kind of, no, they're all selling water in lots of different ways. No one said, oh, they're already selling water. I'm not going to build my own brand of water. And water's free in the tap, for goodness, or well, not free, but, you know, you get water in your tap, for goodness sake. So I think that's always the example of, yeah, you know, you've definitely got a different spin. Water or bread is the, is the example. <laughs> I have a very technical question for James, which is, um, so we've been looking at courses quite a lot and Thinkific keeps coming up as something that people are recommending. I don't know if you had a look at it or had any kind of thoughts on it when you were evaluating. No, sorry, it didn't come up. Uh, not that I remember. It didn't come up in my investigation. So I guess I've got, I think that it's worth have me having another round of this investigation of finding if there is, an online website that could do it uh, or some other system. Cause like I said, I, I sort of cobbled together a system and then kind of relied on some goodwill. So Thinkific we've looked, we've looked at and Teachable is the other one that we've looked at. Um, uh, those are kind of, those seem to be the main two at the moment for anyone that's building a course, especially under lockdown. Um, uh, but then the other thing is, if you're, if you're education-based, then you've also got Google Classroom, and then we're looking at Microsoft Teams because we've got the education version, and you can set assignments, which I guess, if you're an academic, you kind of know this already, but you can set assignments fairly easily, but also host live classes in a locked environment, um, which might be quite useful. So, yeah, it'd be interesting to see the kind of the new iteration for you on that. Yeah, definitely. Um, does anyone else have any other questions or have I, I missed any questions? I have a question for James, but it is also a slightly techie, nerdy question uh, about his tablet. But anyone else want to jump in with a more important question? I'm jealous of the tablet, can I just say? I'm, I think yeah. I might save up for one for Christmas. Yeah, let's go on. Ask me a question about the tablet. I would like to know how responsive it feels. So. Um, I have a, a surface thing, which is a computer, you know, that, that with a touch screen. And the one thing I notice on that when I'm writing on one note with a tap uh, with a pen is that it does feel like I'm writing with ink. Like it, it is responsive enough. And when I had a graphics tablet plugged into a computer, which let me work on a desktop without a touch screen, it was always just a bit of a lag. And I'm wondering if that's improved. Did, did, do you find that you can write naturally on it? I think you're probably right that it's probably not as good as the expensive thing you've got. Well, I'm not, I don't think that there's lots of reasons why my thing doesn't work for what I need it. And I would like mm. to investigate a tablet like yours, but. Um, I, maybe it's something that, oh, I, I, I barely notice it. I think is the correct answer. That's a good sign, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, so I barely notice it. And then I've gotten, because I've been forced to, I've gotten very used to it now. Uh, so now I can actually write along feeling very natural. Uh, so m when I first got it, maybe a little bit, this doesn't feel natural, but it didn't take long. And do you think the, uh, is, it, is it XODO? Is that the software you're using to write on a PDF? So do you just dump a PDF into its online server or because it's running yeah, in your you, browser? Yeah, you open up, so you get a little uh, icon you click on that, but it is in Chrome. So it's opening up Chrome and then you have to open file. Simple as that. Right. I'm going to try that. It does some editing as well. You can remove pages, put in page, merge two files together to make one file. So it's got some other editing things in it, which is nice because I don't have that in any other program. Uh, but then it allows me to write and annotate and all that kind of stuff. Great. Thank you. Yeah, I guess, I mean, I feel like I, I can't see any particular burning questions in the chat. If anyone's put a question in there that we have roundly ignored, please feel free to copy and paste it in again so we can catch it. Um, but I, I think it seems like everyone's uh, happy. This has been good.
Um, I've learned a lot. <laughs> I've learned a lot as well. Um, I know that there's. We'll we'll put them in the document. Have I have I posted the link to the document yet? Yeah, it's um, further up. If you want to paste yeah, it again, that's we can fine. Do. I will do that again. Um, but there's also some things that people have done uh, previously that link very very closely to this. So some of the things that we've talked about on different emails on on you know using different software and stuff like that is directly useful to learning how to do new things. Um, Fran, I know, has written some blogs and hosted a Twitter chat on, on just the topic she was talking about. So there'll be some more information there, which I'm sure she didn't get a chance to, to put in today. And Anne-Marie and James um, have obviously got a wealth of information around as well. So we will add lots of links if we come across them to that document. Please, please do the same. Um, please add in what you have found that works, what you have found that doesn't work is also just as useful um, because it saves someone else doing exactly the same thing as you did. Um, and we'll try and keep that sort of up to date as, as we have done with the others. And this video will be online in say two to three weeks because as discussed, subtitles take a long time. Um, <laughs> How, how long is it going to be before we get tempted to pay for an online transcription service, Sam? <laughs> like, just, <laughs> like, how many hours of staring at yourself talking and trying to write down what you've just said is it going to take? <laughs> I, I think we're at that stage. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, we'll need a lot of money to, uh, to do all the transcription. It's, is there, like, yeah. like, a dollar a minute or something? Is it? Oh, God. They've We've just put it up. If you're talking about rev.com, they've just up their prices. Really? Yeah. Mm. I think it might be a dollar fifty per minute or something like that. Ow. Yeah. Well, you know, it's tough work, isn't it? I guess. Mm. Like, how much would I charge? <laughs> so I was literally spending about three hours editing ten minutes of video. Mm. And that's with the auto generated ones. I'm yeah, just I like am. if it's if it says the thing that the person said, I'm happy. Whereas Sam's like, oh, I'm going to just change the spacing on this and put this bit on a new line so that it's, yeah. <laughs> Trying to be helpful. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> cool. But yeah, thank you very much, everyone. And uh, hopefully see some people next week for maths in universities. And uh, as we said, we may end up running some other things. If there are any particular topics that you think we would like one of these on. So we're thinking maybe slightly more focused topics. So potentially a GeoGebra session has been suggested just for playing with GeoGebra. Uh, we might also include Desmos if we get excited. Uh, but if there is anything specific that you want us to do a really kind of deep dive um, you know, please drop us an email. Um, I'll put the, put the email address for uh, team up in the chat as well if anyone wants to get in touch that way. Um, but we're, we're sort of planning that. We may drop the frequency down to approximately one over two and a half million hertz, which is to say about once a month. Um, but potentially continue these as long as it's useful. Uh, and maybe switch back to real world events at some point. Yay. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> Reminder that there is a link to the WhatsApp group in the chat if you want to join in. Uh, everyone in that group is happy to share ideas just among themselves. Uh, so that's a good way to stay in touch with people. Occasionally we get sidetracked with egg puns. Um, but, you know, it's generally generally very useful, matty type things. I was going to say something. What was I going to say? Oh, yes. Uh, one of the topics I've wondered about for a future T mill is on video editing in particular. So yeah. if anyone wants to back me up on that one, uh, feel free to drop us an email. Um, and just just to say thank you again to all of our wonderful speakers. I have certainly learned at least something from each one of you, and it's been really really helpful to hear your experiences of not only doing things yourself in a new way, but also helping other people to to do things and keep keep their skills um developing if that is indeed what they want to do yeah thanks very much everyone thank you yeah.